This video is clearly going to be about carbohydrates. Um, we've just done condensation polymers and carbohydrates are in fact condensation polymers, but they're not polyesters and they're not polyamides. So we're going to meet a new type of condensation polymer. You will need to be familiar with some terms. The, the data book that QCA provide do give you the structure of glucose. They give it to you as a ring and as an open chain structure. They also give you fructose. They're on page 11 of the data book. Again, please have the data book handy and you can see what I'm talking about. So they're giving you the structure of glucose and fructose. Um, in their open chain formats, glucose is something called an aldose because it contains an aldehyde group and fructose is a ketose because it contains a ketone group. To be honest, I don't think I would really worry too much about those terms. What I would know is that these single units, the monomers that make up the carbohydrates, are, are basically called monosaccharides. If you join two units together, you make a disaccharide. And if you join many units together, you make a polysaccharide. And polysaccharides are carbohydrates. The monosaccharides that the syllabus mentions are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Now they don't give you the structure of galactose, but it's almost identical to glucose, except at carbon number four, the OH and the H change places. You also are expected to know three disaccharides, all of which contain glucose. So if you have two glucose units, then that gives you a disaccharide called maltose. If glucose is with galactose, you make lactose. You may have heard of lactose it's in milk. And if you put glucose with fructose, you make sucrose. And sucrose is the white sugar that we buy in our supermarkets and put on our cereals and whatever. But more importantly, you need to know about some polysaccharides. Now, this at the moment is a molecule called alpha glucose. All monosaccharides have an empirical formula CH2O and they all have a molecular formula of C6H12O6, which of course is six times that empirical formula unit. Now, glucose, as given to you in the data book, is in its alpha form. And in order to distinguish it from the other form, beta, we have to look at carbon number one. Now, I've numbered them in red, as you can see. So if you find the oxygen in that, in that ring, then go from right clockwise until you get to number six. So carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. When alpha glucose links to itself, what it does is, if you can imagine this molecule now there as well, the OH in that position and the OH of the neighbor in that position will actually react together and eliminate water. It's another condensation reaction. But of course, the link you're going to form is you've got two OHs. And if I show them like that for the moment, when you link two OHs together, this is what happens. You take away water and you leave behind O with two single bonds either side of it. So this would have a single bond O and then a single bond to the carbon of the neighboring glucose. That is called a glycosidic link. Let's write it down here for you to see. Glycosidic. It's the only time you see that word in the entire syllabus. So this is now the kind of link you get. It's not an ester. It's not an amide. They will be coming in a moment in the next videos. In carbohydrates, the link between two monosaccharides is called a glycosidic link. So if we now start with the alpha glucose monomer and join it to itself over and over and over again, what we're doing is basically what plants do when they photosynthesize. So plants obviously make glucose from carbon dioxide and water using chlorophyll and um, and the sunlight, the sunlight's energy. 
So glucose is made by the plant and then what they do is link the glucose units together to make a polysaccharide, a carbohydrate called amylose. Let's write that down. Amylose. A amylose. Now amylose is a straight chain of glucose units. They also make another one amylopectin and this tends to be used mainly for storage for energy supplies when maybe the sun goes in and they can't photosynthesize. So the plant is making the amylose and the amylopectin for it to be able to respire. It's not making it for us even though we obviously take advantage of it and we eat the plants to get these carbohydrates. The bottom line is plants make their own food by photosynthesis but they're making it for themselves to use later on. When the sun goes in, they respire just like we do. Now, amylose, as I say, is, are these alpha glucose units linked together over and over and over and over again. Amylopectin is very similar to amylose, a long chain of units, but it also includes one six linkages. So every so often, this OH will link to that OH on a neighbour, and that will cause a branch to take place. It happens probably about every 25 or so units. But those branches will obviously change the structure, and what they do, they in fact make amylopectin much more soluble in water than amylose. The branching gives better solubility in water. The reason they have these branches as well is because if you have lots of branches, then the glucose units that they need for the respiration are easily, more easily picked off. Rather than just be able to take the one off each end, they've got lots of ends by having lots of branches. So it makes the glucose units more available for the respiration when they need them. Okay, now then. Before I tell you about the next set of glucose, I'm staying with alpha glucose and I'm going to talk about, very briefly, something called glycogen. Now glycogen is what we, animals, use to store our carbohydrates. So if we are eating something with sugars or carbohydrates in general, potatoes, bread, whatever, then effectively we are using those to provide the glucose for energy, but we don't use them all, so we keep some in storage for another time. Just like the plants store amylopectin, we store it as glycogen. And glycogen and amylopectin are virtually identical. The only difference is that glycogen has more branches than amylopectin. So whereas amylopectin maybe has a branch every 25, Glycogen will probably have a branch every 10 or 15. But it's the same principle and they are virtually identical molecules. Those are all alpha glucose units. There's one final carbohydrate you need to know about and that is cellulose. Now cellulose is a different ballgame. Cellulose. This is not used for food. This is used for structure. The stems of plants, for example, will contain cellulose. It's much more rigid. It's completely water insoluble. And cellulose is no longer using alpha glucose. Instead, what it does is change those around. And cellulose has the OH there and the H there. We have now got beta glucose. So alpha and beta glucose differ simply by the place, the, the carbon one having the OH pointing down for the alpha and up for the beta. Now when this links to that on a neighbor, they are basically not going to be able to get at each other because one's pointing up and one's pointing down. So what has to happen is if one glucose molecule is like that, the next one will have to flip upside down in order for this and this to form the glycosidic link. What that means is, if this glucose has the CH2 pointing up, 
The next glucose will have it pointing down. The next one will be pointing up again, then down, then up, then down. And that gives an incredibly straight chain, which allows so many of these OHs to interact with the ones on the neighboring chain. That causes tremendous attraction. And that gives cellulose its strength, its rigidity, and its complete insolubility in water.